In today's Locked On NBA, I'm talking to Ed Oliver of Locked On Wizards about Russell Westbrook's trade to the Lakers and what that means for the future of the Washington Wizards. It's all coming up. Let's get stuck into it. It's the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On NBA, your daily NBA podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey guys, welcome back to another show. We're going to talk Washington Wizards and the Russell Westbrook trade, what it means for Bradley Beal and for the future of the Wizards. Today's show is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your sports action. Baseball season is in full swing, and you can track all of that action at Bet Online. Get all the latest news, odds, and info for all of your sporting needs, including Major League Baseball and PGA Golf and UFC and MMA. Before the next pitch, head over to Bet Online on your laptop or mobile device and check out all of the great sporting news, sign-up bonuses, and contest information. Don't sit on the sidelines anymore, as this is your chance to get into the game as teams prep for their runs to the playoffs. Head to the website, betonline.ag, and use our promo code Locked On to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet Online are your online sportsbook experts. All right, it's time for me to go and get Ed Ola, bring him in, and let's talk Washington Wizards and the Russell Westbrook trade. All right, so let's bring him in now. One of the hosts of the Locked On Wizards podcast, Ed Oliver, is here with me. Ed, the Wizards pulled a big move on draft day. Russell Westbrook is gone after one season in Washington. Um, The writing appeared to be on the wall, but I don't think people expected it necessarily. There was always those whispers. and It's like, okay, this is just standard Westbrook to the Lakers rumors, which we hear every year for the last five or six years, it's felt like. How real did that feel before the draft? And was there any surprise that this did get executed so quickly? Um, Yeah, so Tommy Shepard had a press conference the day before the draft, and he said that nobody requested a trade, um, including Bradley Bill and Russell Westbrook. Uh, So it it somewhat was a surprise, but um, I, I probably should have kept my guard up to be alert for a trade to happen for them to blow it up. Um, I actually thought when they traded Russell Westbrook, I thought that Bradley Bill was, re- was going to request a trade as well. Uh, but he really wants to stay with the Washington Wizards and, and build and help them build around him. Yeah, so that was where we were going to go next. We'll, we'll talk about Beal in a second. Let, let's talk a little bit about the return for Russell Westbrook. Of course, Montrez Harrell, Kyle Kuzma, first round pick, which the, was pick number 22, and the Wizards ended up trading that on to the Indiana Pacers. And so they end up with Harrell, Kuzma, Contavious Corwell Pope, Aaron Holiday, and pick 31, which ended up being Isaiah Todd. Um, yeah, that's obviously not a player at the level of Russell Westbrook, but it's it's five five different players acquired in that trade. Do you think that that is a fair return for Westbrook? Are you happy with those guys there? Um, and can they all be, you know, or majority of them be significant rotation pieces this season? I think it was a solid move to get off Russell Westbrook's contract. He was getting paid forty four million in twenty twenty one, and then he was going to uh, he could have opted in in the 2023 season for $47 million. So it wasn't easy to get off of that contract uh, for, you know, so so for shipping that contract, I thought we've got a decent return and getting a first round pick uh, from the Lakers as well that we turned into, uh, we traded that back and we ended up getting Aaron Holiday, like you said. So we got a backup point guard and Isaiah Todd. So I thought that was a solid haul. And then there's actually rumors right now that are circling that we will be uh, trying to trade Montrez Harrell and Kyle Kuzma to the Nets for Spencer, for Spencer Dinwiddie from the Nets because we need a point guard really badly. We need a starting point guard because Russell Westbrook, you know, we traded him. We, we just don't have a legitimate starting point guard right now because Aaron Holiday is not going to be our starter. He's most likely going to be our backup. Um, so I, I thought it was I thought it was fair value for somewhat of a salary dump for a guy that in Russell Westbrook that requested a trade that wanted to team up with LeBron and Anthony Davis. I thought the haul was, um, was serviceable. And if we can flip – guys like Kuzma and Harrell uh, for, for a really good starting point guard, then I think it's, I think it was fair value. Look, if, if that move can come down, because as you said, you know, you don't have a starting point guard because the starting point guard and both of the backup point guards are gone. You know, or not, you know, Ish Smith and Hull Neto, right. they can come back, but they're free agents, so they may not be back. So at the moment, there's Aaron Holiday that's in place there. So if you can turn you know, Kuzma and Harrell into Spencer Dinwiddie, I think it's a really big win 
for the Wizards to be able to do that. Because Dinwiddie is a guy, of course, coming off that partially torn ACL, but a guy that's never really had that opportunity to be a full-time NBA starter. But the thought around the league and from nearly everybody is he is an NBA starting caliber point guard and he's going to get that opportunity. So if they are able to turn those assets, which you know, the Harrell the Harrell move, like we know Harrell was sixth man of the year a couple of years ago, but he was pretty disappointing this season. And with you know, Daniel Gafford, Thomas Bryant and other centers and bringing in an Isaiah Todd as well, his fit was a little bit weird, I guess. Uh, with this squad, it would make sense to get a Dinwiddie, and I think that's a strong move. But in talking about Bradley Beal, as you said, you thought it yeah, maybe just mean Bradley Beal is moving on. And a lot of people were thinking that, but you know, Sham Sharania came out straight away basically and said no, that yeah, Brad wants to stay in DC. And that's always been the thing. It's constantly been yeah, Bradley Beal trade rumors. When is Beal requesting a trade? And the constant theme coming out of Washington has been, no, Brad wants to stay with DC, and he wants to be the guy to be built around. He wants to win it with him being the main guy. Do you think there was any, I don't, I don't know if the right word is is impetus or pressure from Beal to be like, okay, we got Westbrook in. It didn't really translate into a huge increase in wins from the previous season or anything. Yeah, we had that little run and made it to the play playoffs through the play-in tournament. Do you think Beal was like, well, okay, I, I want to go back to being the guy that has the sky-high usage and runs everything. The Westbrook thing didn't actually help us that much. If he wants to move, I'm more than happy to, to get rid of him, but let's build around me now. Yeah, so he wants to – he he was saying something like similar to what Giannis said where – Giannis, after he won his ring, he, he didn't want to team up with other guys. He didn't want to team up with the Nets and the Miami Heat back in 2011 and other, you know, super teams like that. So Bradley Bill has been preaching that for the past couple of years. And every single summer, there are rumors about him uh, saying that he's going to request a trade and photoshops of him in different teams' jerseys, like Miami Heat jerseys and different things like that. So um, he really wants this team to be built around him. Now, Wes Unsell Jr., he does want them to pass the ball more. Last year was a lot of ISO basketball, Bradley Bill, a lot of isolation. Russell Westbrook, you know, we all know he's he's, a, he's an isolation guy as well. Uh, so the, the new coach really wants them to move the ball and pass the ball. And I think if they get a guy like Spencer Dinwiddie, there will be more passes uh, for that roster. It's a, how it was with Russell Westbrook. So I, I think he wants them to build the team. Also, the trade, it did give us an eight, eight $8.5 million trade ex- exception, and it did free up five dollars in cash space and then also the following year in 2020 2022 that off season we're going to have 25 million dollars in cap space available because we traded russell westbrook so those cap space moves do make it more flexible for the wizards to make moves next year to convince bradley bill to come back not just this year but the next year when his contract is up um you know most likely they will be offering him a, a huge huge deal for bradley bill to stay uh, after after next season, so but I, I think he wants to be that number one guy, and um, can we can we get a championship in DC with him being the number one guy? That's a tough question. I mean, I don't I don't personally I don't know if it can happen, but um, you know we'll we'll see what, what happens with Bradley Bill's a number one option. We'll see if if Tommy Shepard can make some moves and bring some 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 good guys in here to surround him with talent. Well, they're clearly they're clearly not rebuilding because you know if they're rebuilding, you're not you're not taking a guy like Corey Kispert in the draft. You're not you know moving making moves for Spencer Dinwiddie. You're looking to build uh, around Bill, not like tearing it down. So it is going to be interesting to see exactly what Shepard does and how Wes Unsell does in his first season as uh, as coach. I think it actually makes it a little bit easier for Unsell without having Westbrook there because then you can sort of tailor a system a little bit more around Bill and, and get things to work that way rather than some of the stuff that Westbrook does make tougher. Um, uh, on his teammates and with the coaching staff with his uh, very distinct style of play. Ed, you'll have it covered for us all over on Locked on Wizards, whatever Washington does here in the offseason uh, with free agency starting tomorrow. Thanks for coming on Locked on NBA, and people can check you out over there. Yeah, thank you for having me on. And uh, you you can follow me. Oh, yeah. uh, go, go ahead, Ed. Sorry, you just cut out. Uh, yeah, you can you can check me out on Lockdown Wizards, and uh, you can follow me on Twitter at the uh, username below. Go and uh, go go check out Ed and uh, and check out Lockdown Wizards.